Welcome back to the channel and today we have a Civivi double header. First we have the Civivi Cairo. So doing something that I've never seen before and I think it's pretty darn cool for a budget knife. These come in at $59 and like I said you have that satin blade and you have this new handle scale material. At first when I pulled it out I thought this was like a crushed carbon fiber handle but this is crushed a G10. I've never seen that before. I think it looks nice. It shimmers in the light, kind of like carbon fiber does. It has better texture, in my opinion, than just plain smooth G10. I think it looks nice, and like I said, for a budget price, that's really cool. I would love to see it in different colors if it shimmers like that. All G10 is compressed fiberglass, so I think that's what's shimmering like that. So the Cairo is a medium sized EDC knife at 7.6 inches long with a 3.1 inch clip point blade of 14C 28 inch steel. One of my favorite budget steels. You can get it so ridiculously sharp. It's highly corrosion resistant and it's super tough as well. This one does have a satin finish and it's a pretty nice even satin finish on it. You have this super deep clip point right here with the little hump in the middle. Very, 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 very thin tip. Thinner than a Spyderco PM2. This tip is coming in at 17 thousandths. That is super, super thin. And not to mention it's super bulky, bulky. Definitely could get it into a bag of potato chips really easily with that. You have a high flat grind that comes down to around 16 thousandths behind the edge. Why don't we see how well this thing performs and how well this tip holds up. This one came even sharper than the fixed blade. And I did have to establish uh, how that, that edge in the belly goes up. I had to establish you know, how far I was going through because I did slide out of the cut a few times. And that's because that belly kind of curves up a good bit. But definitely slicing very well. And now we're testing the ergos. And I was a little worried about this um, as I started increasing the pressure. I hate whenever you have, you know, more than one uh, choil on a handle, and this one has the three. So my ring finger was sitting on the second hump, and then that pocket clip, how, how narrow it gets in the back right there, was digging into my hand. Wasn't terrible. I was still able to get a good bit of force into this wood, but I definitely left a imprint into my hand. And even though you got to lift it up high, you can still use that tip to drag through stuff. And man, that tip area is so thin, kind of scary thin. We're gonna test it and do some light stabbing with it. A uh, viewer asked me to do that, so I obliged, at least with this one, just because, you know, if any, if any of them are gonna break from just doing normal stabbing, this one will. Cross my fingers, hoping that it doesn't. I'm not gonna be twisting it side to side or anything. That'd be kind of ignorant of me, but we're gonna test it out. But so far, man, that edge is crisp. And as you see here, it's popping this rope pretty darn nice. Um, got a new pair of gloves, or I got a couple of pair of gloves. I'm trying to find a pair of good ones because the blisters are getting bad on my hands. Uh, these are those mechanic gloves. Uh, they're okay. I, I got one size too big though. Um, the material's kind of, it's not really that grippy. I think grippy is better than having padding in the inside palms. But yeah, it's cutting really good. I finally got me some more of the sisal rope that I use all the time. And man, it's so much different than that garbage I had before. There's no big hunks of glue in it. But yeah, it's, it's performing really, really nicely. By that tip, the geometry is so nice and thin. It's performing really, really well. And that new material, that new handle material, that Crush G10, is, still offers a good bit of uh, traction. So very uh very comfortable in that pinch grip and it's slicing really well we get through 81 cuts before i run our rope and it still felt really nice and crisp we'll try to test that after this test is over with though but yeah definitely give this one a pass even though this is not what i would go to grab uh just i don't like that much belly in my knives
Now let's check that edge after all that cutting. Still feels good, but yeah, still, still sharp. Yeah, not bad. Now let's take a look at the deployment, the action of this knife. You have a flipper tab and a blade hole. The flipper has jimping on it and it functions really, really nice. It comes whacking out. It is riding on ceramic ball bearings with a ceramic detent ball. You can use that blade hole to reverse flick if you want and you can use it to slow roll it. Like I said, definitely a well-tuned detent. Now let's take a look at this handle area. Like I said, you have that crushed G10 with a deep chamfer going all the way around so you don't have any sharp areas where you don't want them to be. The stainless steel liners are a little proud of the G10, just meaning it's like shadow box. They, they stick out a little bit further, but they are nice and rounded, so they're not uncomfortable in that sense. You have a Torx T8 throughout love it and as you can see you have an inset spot for the pocket clip which is deep carry and it's reversible the knife sits very deep in the pocket all you have is this little portion sticking up and it's fairly easy to get in and out it holds it nicely as well during the cutting i noted and i, I figured this would be the case i never like seeing if i gotta have a choil one right here it's fine but whenever you have these three your hands have to fit in those are it's going to be uncomfortable well for me this finger fits here this finger fits here well this finger is sitting on top of that hump right there and it wasn't terrible but i could definitely feel it whenever i started really bearing down into the wood and another thing and i figured this would be the case as well whenever you have a handle that comes down like this it gets real narrow and your pocket clips right there the pocket clip was digging into my hand right here pretty darn bad but just whenever i was really bearing down into it you know is that something you plan on doing with this if so then maybe this might not be the one for you but for my medium-sized hands all the light duty stuff was a-okay you have flow through construction two hourglass standoffs here and then you have two little posts right there i'm guessing for a lanyard tons of skeletonization on that show side scale as you can see they lighten it up as much as they possibly could and they have some on the back side Bring the weight to 3.66 ounces. The lockup on my knife is sitting at around 40, maybe even 50%. Access to that lock bar is pretty good because this comes down a little bit lower. I can get my thumb in there rather easily and they have that texture there. Mine, solid. No movement in any direction whatsoever. Quick size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1 and 2. Next up, we have the Civivi Cogen, the Civivi Elementum. Last we have the Vossied Raccoon and the QSP Penguin. It's about identical in length to the Raccoon. Nitpicks and complaints. I think they could have extended this sharpening choil a little bit because it's almost right there on that plunge grind. Uh, also, I'm never a fan of these multiple choils like that. It, it just forces you into a grip. And if your hands don't fit it right, then it's going to be uncomfortable. And lastly, this is just personal preference. I'm not really into this type of blade. But overall, well made performs really nicely if you're looking for extremely pokey pokey this will definitely do that for you and 14c 28n very very good budget steel and you can even try out a new handle scale material next up we have the civivi various i consider this either an edc fixed blade or a tactical fixed blade also have two different trainer versions a blacked out one and a satin one with green g10 but those are sold separately comes with a nice kydex sheath that's uh, nice and thick comes with the pocket clip so if you wanted to carry this as say a boot knife you could i tried it wasn't most comfortable for me good retention there's no rattle in there you got enough handle to be able to push off and you have other attachment points around the kydex doesn't matter which way you put this in it's going to fit both ways so it's an ambidextrous sheath the knife also comes with a karambit ring. We'll look at that in just a second. This is an Alan Lichwitz design. I like a lot of his stuff. And overall, I love the overall profile of this. You got a beautiful drop point. Perfect size at 7.38 inches long with a 3.26 inch, like I said, drop point blade of D2 steel, which not super excited about that. But other than that, I love the profile of this one. You have some nice effective jimping up here. I do think they could have extended it further out because a lot of the times I'm going past it, 
do have a pretty robust tip there if you need to do any kind of poking and prodding into wood or something like that. This one has a nice even satin finish on it. Good sharpening choil. You should have some sharpening life before it'll start to widen up back here. And you have a almost a full height flat grind that comes down to around 18 thousandths behind the edge. Why don't we see how this one performs? The knife came with an excellent, excellent edge out of box and perfect blade shape. This could be good probably for everything because the belly's not too crazy. Uh, the only thing is this handle's a little thin. It's not going to bother you doing this type of stuff, but maybe later on down the road. And another thing that I'm worried about is that polished edge on D2 steel. Now we start out light and of course you could make some feather sticks with this if you had to in a pinch but definitely would not be my first choice because it's so thin in the hand it's cramping my hands and my forearms rather quickly. I am able to get some power into it but it's not the most comfortable just because of how thin the handle is. But if you had to do it in a pinch could you do it? Yep easily. I mean you can see I'm, I'm able to get some pretty uh, powerful cuts in there and uh, no real hot spots just uh, it's just hard to hold on to that needle like tip is like a razor blade i mean scalpel like perfect for drag cuts and like i said you have that right amount of belly to do all this stuff very easily now struggling a little bit there because i had to put you have to push hard into that first tubing and it wants to slide around in my hands even with gloves on but once again you could definitely do it and uh, so far the edge is holding up pretty well it feels like it's kind of starting to slow down a little bit um, and I, I think it's because of the polished edge on d2 once again um, it's okay here i got some aggression left to it but it's definitely not feeling like it did in the beginning <clears throat> and uh, when i resharpen this i'll probably leave it at a 600 grit edge and strop it uh, that's where I've noticed D2 to really shine and let that edge last you a good while. Uh, when you go to polish an, a D2 edge, I find it, it you get microchips rather easily. And this is a factory edge also, so um, it would be different if this was 14C. I would have loved that, but they went with D2. And I, I do think, though, with a coarse edge, the D2 would last longer than the 14C and the Nitro V but not with this polished edge. Uh, it is slicing well because it's got good geometry, especially uh, toward that tip. And uh, once again, it's not the most comfortable. I'm getting a blister on my finger, but it's not the worst either. We get through 80 cuts before I run out of rope and not too bad, not too shabby. Now let's check the edge after the cutting. It feels like it has some microchipping in it. Not bad at all. Definitely feel a little bit of drag when I do it slow. But the edge is rough feeling compared to the 14C edge. But I call that good. This is how I carried it in my shorts pocket and not a whole lot of the knife sticking out. Good retention there and the pocket clip stays in place when you're done using it. Easy does it. So using this as an EDC fixed blade, it'll work pretty well, but it is pretty darn thin. That G10 is actually thin as well. It is a uh, peel ply, but it's not super grippy. And they did chamfer the edges all around here. So there's no sharp spots. And being that you have this extra piece right here, fills out my medium sized hands nicely. I, I, I sit in front of that little spot. Now let's take a look at the karambit ring. 
Yeah, I can see the, uh, so this is what it looks like in the inside. I do like how you can add that much extra handle. I have a few knives I would like to do that on. So you slide it into this channel. I, they even rounded this over right here, crowned it so it wouldn't have a hard edge. And perfect fit. The grambit ring is actually pretty comfortable. Fits fairly tight in there. And if you want to use it as like a bulbous end, you could too. Or this is probably the most comfortable grip. And there you go. The weight with the sheath is 4.102 ounces. Quick size comparison with Dontario Wrap 1 and 2. It's right in the middle of those two. Next up, we have the Civivi Storm Ridge, I think it is, and the Volsteed Mink. And lastly, we have the Civivi Tamashi and the Kaiser Harpoon, just a little bit longer than the Harpoon. All right, nitpicks and complaints. I think it would have benefited by having some jimping up here for doing this uh, pointer finger grip. And I kind of wish this G10 was a little bit thicker to fill out the hand, at least on this part. Doesn't have to be that on the Karambit ring, but it would make sense on the G10. But I know it would make the price go up. But as it sits, what do I think? I absolutely love it. You know, it's a very easy carry fixed blade. Comes with a nice setup already. I, I wish we'd see more like this. To where there's not a whole lot of the fixed blade sticking up once it's in the deep carry pocket clip. Final thoughts, both of them great knives. It's just going to depend if this is something you're interested in. Anything that I talked about as, as nitpicks or complaints. If they're not deal breakers for you, then yes, I could definitely recommend it. It's a well-built knife and it's a sound knife. As far as the various, I think... It's a very useful blade. I don't know about in the tactical sense because I don't really use mine like that. But just a super versatile drop point blade. Perform really nicely. I really do wish though they would have went with the 14C on this one. So it would have been stainless and I could have put, you know, that super keen, keen edge on it. D2 holds a good edge for a while but i think it would have definitely benefited by not having this mirrored edge on here because by the fingernail test i definitely have some very very minor micro chipping on it definitely still slices cleanly but you know i think it would have been even better with the 14c so there you go if you have any questions comments concerns please leave them down below i hope everybody's having an absolute absolute amazing day these will be linked down in the description and i will see y'all on the next one peace